Hello 3C, I'm going to read the next section of um, Fantastic Mr Fox for you. Um, but I wanted to say um, about reading books, uh, especially when you're uh, not able to come to school. Um, you, can, you can read books absolutely anywhere, uh, in your bedroom, your kitchen, uh, and the weather was a bit nicer today. Um, so I'm sat outside reading. Uh, so if you've got a garden, maybe at the front or the back of your house or near your house or a park or just some outdoor space, um, it's quite nice to actually take a book along and read it outside. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for you today. Um, so we were, yesterday we had the fox being very cunning um, and he was just about to go off and get some um, dinner from, um, I think he was going to go and have duck. Uh, and chick and a uh, duck, I think it was this evening. Um, that's what Mrs. Mrs. Fox had said to get. So Mr. Fox was just trying to get some. He inched forward a little more. The front half of his body was now in the open. His black nose twitched from side to side, sniffing and sniffing for the scent of danger. He found none, and he was just about to go trotting forward into the wood when he heard, or he thought he heard, a tiny noise, a soft rustling sound as though someone had moved a foot ever so gently through a patch of dry leaves. Mr. Fox flattened his body against the ground and, and lay very still. His ears pricked. He waited a long time, but he heard nothing more. It must have been a field mouse, he told himself, or some other small animal. He crept a little further out of the hole, and then further still. He was almost right out in the open now. He took a last careful look around. The wood was murky and very still. Somewhere in the sky, the moon was shining. Just then, his sharp night eyes caught a glint of something bright behind a tree not far away. It was a small silver speck of moonlight shining on a polished surface. Mr. Fox lay still watching it. What on earth was it? Now it was moving. It was coming up and up. Great heavens, it was the barrel of a gun. Quick as a whip, Mr Fox jumped back into his hole and at the same instant, the entire wood seemed to explode around him. Bang, 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 bang. The smoke from the three guns floated upward in the night air. Boggis and Bunce and Bean came out from behind their trees and walked towards the hole. Did we get him? said Bean. One of them shone a flashlight on the hole. And there on the ground, in the circle of light, half in and half out of the hole, lay the poor, tattered, blood-stained blood -stained remains of a fox's tail. Bean picked it up. We got the tail, but we missed the fox, he said, tossing, t t tossing the thing away. Dang em blast, said Boggis. We shot too late. We should have let fly the moment he poked his head out. <laughs> he won't be poking his head out again in a hurry, Bunce said. Bean pulled a flask from his pocket and took a swig of cider. And then he said, It will take three days at least before he gets hungry enough to come out again. I'm not sitting around here waiting for that. Let's dig him out. Ah, said Boggis, now you're talking sense. We can dig him out in a couple of hours. We know he's there. I reckon there's a whole family of them down that hole, Bunt said. Then we'll have the lot, said Bean. Get the shovels. Chapter 4 is called The Terrible Shovels. Down in the hole, Mrs. Fox was tenderly licking the stump of Mr. Fox's tail to stop the bleeding. It was the finest tail for miles around, she said between licks. It hurts, said Mr. Fox. I know it does, sweetheart, but it will soon get better. And it will soon grow again, Dad, said one of the small foxes. It will never grow again, said Mr. Fox. I shall be tailless for the rest of my life. He looked very glum. There was no food for the foxes that night and soon the children dozed off. Then Mrs. Fox dozed off but Mr. Fox couldn't sleep because of the pain in the stump of his tail. Well, he thought, I suppose I'm lucky to be alive at all. And now they've found our hole, we're gonna have to move out as soon as possible. We'll never get any peace if we... What was that? He turned his head sharply and listened. The noise he heard was the most frightening noise a fox can, e can ever hear. The scrape, scrape, scraping of shovels digging into the soil. 
Wake up, he shouted. They're digging us out. Mrs. Fox was wide awake in one second. She sat up, quivering all over. Are you sure that's it, she whispered. I'm positive. Listen, they'll kill my children, cried Mrs. Fox. Never, said Mr. Fox. But darling, they will, sobbed Mr. Fox. You know they will. Scrunch, scrunch, scrunch went the shovels above their heads. Small stones and bits of earth began fa falling from the roof of the tunnel. How will they kill us, Mummy? asked one of the small foxes. His round black eyes were huge with fright. Will there be dogs, he said. Mrs. Fox began to cry. She gathered her four children close to her and held them tight. Suddenly there was an especially loud crunch above their heads and the sharp end of a shovel came right through the ceiling. The sight of this awful thing seemed to have an electric effect upon Mr. Fox. He jumped up and shouted, I've got it, come on, there's not a moment to lose. Why didn't I think of it before? Think of what, Dad? A fox can dig quicker than a man, shouted Mr. Fox, beginning to dig. Nobody in the world can dig as quick as a fox. The soil began to fly out furiously behind Mr. Fox as he started to dig for dear life with his front feet. Mrs. Fox ran forward to help him, and so did the four children. Go downwards, ordered Mr. Fox. We've got to go deep, as deep as we possibly can. The tunnel began to grow longer and longer. It sloped steeply downward. Deeper and deeper below the surface of the ground it went. The mother and the father and all four of the children were digging together. Their front legs were moving so fast you couldn't see them. And gradually the scrunching and scraping of the shovels became fainter and fainter. Hold it, he said. They all stopped. They turned and looked back up, up the long tunnel they had just dug. All was quiet. Phew, said Mr Fox. I think we've done it. They'll never get as deep as this. Well done, everyone. But they had been digging for over an hour. They all sat down, panting for breath. And Mrs Fox said to her children, I should like you to know that if it wasn't for your father, we would all be dead. There's a picture of them digging. If you can see that. Your father is a fantastic fox. Mr Fox looked at his wife and she smiled. He loved her more than ever when she said things like that. Well, that's a lovely way to end uh, that chapter, isn't it? So we'll continue the story next time. Have a lovely day and I'll see you again when I do the next chapter.